What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're working on the Datsun 280Z once again. And basically this engine has one or 200,000 miles on it. It's getting kind of old. I know that it's been rebuilt at some point, but I really have no knowledge of that rebuild. So I wanna take a look inside the motor and see what condition everything is on the inside. So stick around, cause we're gonna find out whether this engine is doing well or if it's headed for the trash. And here she is, the L28 in the Datsun 280Z, essentially a stock motor. Um, it may have a cam in it. I've never really been actually able to check on that. But what I do have is I do have a serial number here from Jasper Engines. And Jasper is a national engine rebuilder here. And I gave them that serial number and I asked them about this build. And they have literally no record of this build on file. So I have no knowledge of what was done to it in the past. And I don't know when it was done. But essentially, last month we put a new exhaust in the car and when we were testing out the exhaust, I saw some white smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe and I'll show you a clip of that real quick. But that prompted me to thinking, you know, what, what was the cause of that smoke? Is it some oil blow by? Is it a little bit of coolant burning? And so this prompted me to try and figure out what's the condition of the motor. So let's go over to the bench real quick and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use today to do all of our tests. And so today I'm basically gonna do two different tests to try and figure out what's going on with the car. First, we're gonna do a compression test of the cylinders. I got this tester kit from AutoZone free. You just go there, you rent it, they take your credit card, and then you when you, when you return it, they give it to you all your money back. Then I also got a re remote starter switch, which is not for rent. I had to purchase that as like 18 bucks. And so these are gonna help us do a compression test. And then once we figure out the PSI of the motor, um, we're gonna see what cylinders are maybe low on compression. And then I bought a little tiny camera, which is gonna be really cool. I'm excited to see this. We can actually stick this into the spark plug hole and we can see the inside of the cylinders. So that's gonna be really cool. It's actually got a light on the tip of it so we can see in there even if it's really dark. One thing to know is I'm gonna put a link to that in the description so you can buy it, but it is not compatible with iPhone. So that's why I've got my trusty old laptop here and uh, we're gonna plug her in and check out the inside of the cylinders. So this is a pretty easy round of tests. So let's get into it. And so before we start the whole compression test, we have to do a couple things. So I just let the car idle for about five minutes to get it up to operating temperature. Basically you wanna get the engine up to operating temperature so that the, the piston rings will heat up and expand within the cylinder and give you a good compression rating. So be careful because things are hot. Uh, but then after that, all we have to do is disconnect our ignition coil. And we'll set this to the side. And then we're gonna go over to the other side where the spark plugs are, so. All right, so here are where the spark plugs are. If you've seen one of my other videos, I have a tutorial on how to do your spark plug wires like this, but I'm just gonna start disconnecting them. So yeah, watch out, it is hot. And then once your spark plug wires are out, go ahead and get yourself an 18 millimeter socket and remove these spark plugs. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. And so I'm gonna keep track of these, make sure they're all in order, it's gonna be hot. Um, but actually the burn on this looks pretty good. It's not too oily or gross, it's just a little bit um, like kind of matte black. And so upon closer inspection, most of the holes for the spark plugs seem to be doing okay. And most of the spark plugs look okay. But unfortunately, cylinder one right here seems to have oil literally just coming out of the spark plug hole. So um, that's definitely not a great thing. And that may be the culprit for a little bit of smoke. I don't know, we'll see. So next for the compression test, we need to set up the remote starter. And so the reason why we use this is because if you were to go to the driver's seat and crank the car and do the compression test with the, uh, the gauge plugged in, which I'll show you guys in a minute, um, you'd have to disconnect the fuel system because when you turn the key it'd be pressurizing the fuel system and so you want to avoid fuel being sprayed into the cylinders and that's why we disconnected the uh, ignition coil over here because we also don't want any you know electricity going through these these spark plugs while we're doing this test so disconnect the spark and then use this to bypass the fuel pump and then bada bing bada boom you get your measurement so in order to get this remote starter to work, you have to think of this like its own solenoid. So 
The engine has a solenoid that tells the starter to crank that's attached to the, uh, the ignition with the key, right? So we basically are bypassing the key solenoid and we're making our own. So this is basically like our switch that tells it, hey, you can crank over the motor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and remove this little plug here because this little wire is for is basically the solenoid wire. Take one of these alligator clips here that comes on the, uh, the switch. We're gonna attach that to that same thing that the little wire was attached to. Then we're gonna attach this to the positive side and make sure everything is out of the way of the fan. You don't want anything to get caught up if you start the car. But in theory, we should click this and the motor turns over. So good news, this works. I'd never done that before. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the compression test gauge in that first cylinder and let's see how it goes. You might have noticed that we took out all of the spark plugs and you do wanna do that. You wanna take out all the spark plugs because you want the engine to have as little resistance as possible while spinning. And that's hopefully gonna give you the most accurate um, PSI rating. So take them all out. Don't worry about all these other cylinders here. We're just gonna do one at a time as far as testing goes. So they have this little adapter here. And then I got this gauge, AutoZone, thank you. That way I don't have to buy it. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera on a tripod, but I'm gonna plug this in and then uh, we'll go to the next step. So now that we have our gauge installed in cylinder one, there's a few things that we need to remember that we have to do while doing this test. We need to be watching the gauge for anywhere from 150 to 180. That's the somewhat healthy range with 180 being the top and 150 PSI being the, the lower side of things. And then uh, we need to hold the throttle body open or hold the throttle open. That way we're not having any wind resistance of pulling air in. And then we need to hold the switch at the same time. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little multitasking. All right, cylinder number one is at about 158 PSI. So Reasonably healthy, but nothing to be alarmed about, but also not fantastic. Let's move on to the other cylinders. Cylinder two is 155. Cylinder three is 158. Cylinder four, 158. 160 in cylinder five. 154 for cylinder six. So overall, Pretty dang good. Okay, so the compression check is done and all of the, the, the cylinders are within you know a good range, 150 to 160 PSI. That's about average for a motor of this age, at least that's what I've seen online. And so that means that there's nothing major currently wrong, right? But there might be some smaller issues or some things in the past that maybe are causing smoking now. Um, and I don't get a lot of smoke, but it's still good to know these things. So we're gonna go ahead and take this camera and I'm gonna plug it into my computer and we're gonna stick it into the cylinders and we're gonna see what, uh, what's going on with, the, with that. So, but before we do that, we need to figure out like, what are we looking for inside of the cylinders? You know, what, what kind of damage can we see or what's normal? And so what is normal is uh, a normal like polishing on the side of the, uh, the cylinder wall. And so what is that polishing? So normally a uh, cylinder wall is honed and basically what that is, that's like a bunch of little lines that are written with a tool on the inside of the cylinders and that helps oil stick to the side and it just creates a good mating surface for uh, the piston or good sliding surface. And so if there's polishing on the perpendicular sides of the cylinder wall that are perpendicular to the crankshaft, um, that's what we can expect to see. And so basically that polishing is caused by the, the piston inside the cylinder going up and down and up and down and up and down. But as the con rod pulls the cylinder and pushes the cylinder up or the piston up, the piston kind of like turns a little bit inside of the cylinder wall. And so that turning over time polishes the side of the cylinder wall with the piston. And so that's what we're looking for, for expected wear and tear. Um, and that's usually not a huge issue unless it's like a really big polished out you know, divot. And in that case, 
um, you know, the, the, the piston ring can catch that or it can just become a, a huge issue in the future. But um, probably not gonna see a huge issue with that, but that's what we can expect. And so another thing that we can expect is potentially scratches in the side of the cylinder wall. And the deep scratches in the side of the cylinder wall that go up and down like this, generally are caused by a really rich fuel mixture. And so um, when the, these cars are plagued with having really rich fuel mixtures because the ECUs are just like primitive. And so if you have a stock ECU um, and you have a really rich fuel mixture or if the, uh, the water coolant sensor is messed up, it could be really rich as well. And so basically what happens is that when the fuel air fuel mixture is super, super rich, it actually will wash away the oil that's on the side of the cylinder walls. And so when you wash away that oil with the cylinder walls, um, you have more friction, more heat, and it has the potential for if there's no lubrication at the side of the cylinder walls for either the, the piston side or the piston rings to kind of grind up against that, uh, the cylinder wall. So if in the past we had some times where we were super, super rich, we could see some scratches. And so typically the scratches aren't a huge deal, but I mean, if they're big enough, maybe it could cause some blow by and have not such a good seal. Now we do have good compression, so I don't think we're gonna see anything too crazy, but uh, let's get in there anyway. Moving into cylinder one, get a first look at the inside of the motor. Things seem to look pretty good. We have a few vertical striations, but you know, maybe that's from the previous engine rebuild. You can still see the honing on the sides, which I think is a really good sign. Into cylinder two, also looking pretty good. No major polishing. On the right side of the piston here, you're going to see a little divot, which I come to find out is uh, is pretty normal. They're all there. It's on every single cylinder. Into cylinder three, and very similar to the other cylinders, except on the left side we have some burn marks. I'm not sure what those are caused by. Into cylinder four, very similar story to cylinder three. Cylinder five, same thing again. We might have some marks on the cylinder wall right there on the top left, the little brown rust marks. I'm not sure what those are from, but it seems to be okay. Cylinder number six definitely seems like the cleanest one out of the bunch. Um, the cylinder is nice and clean. The cylinder wall is nice and clean. And yeah, overall, most of the cylinders are looking pretty good. All right guys, so to get the car back on, put the spark plugs back in there, reconnect all the wires, um, put a little anti-seize on the spark plug threads, maybe just a little bit, and then uh, torque it down to 12 foot pounds. And she should be ready to turn back on. So, you know, to me overall, the cylinder walls looked really good. The pistons look fine. Um, so any of the white smoke that I experienced could just be like the engine being hot, burning a little bit of oil or you know, maybe it was running a little bit lean for a moment. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you guys saw anything that you think I should know of that I didn't catch, let me know. But I'm feeling really good about it. I feel like this motor's in great condition and you know, all the other things except for a motor rebuild are necessary right now. You know, in the future, maybe we can build it up and do something really awesome like a 3.0 stroker or something. But uh, for now, engine is doing good. So I hope you guys learned something in this video and enjoyed seeing what I just did here. Um, if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you've seen a couple of my videos and you want to see a couple more, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you back. Uh, but guys, until next time, see you later.